Hey, Marcelo. Okay, uh, we'll get started. Uh, six scale, this is December 2nd. Um, well, I attach the doc and add yourself as an attendee. Okay. Um, all right, Marcelo, um, thanks for joining. So you have, you have the first item here. Yeah, so, you know, um, I don't know if I think the time, you know, maybe winter time or summer time, you know, I don't know what's happened. Um, it's one hour later now for me. And yeah. it's just like, uh, you know, 12 a.m. And if you guys, well, if it's not too bad for you guys, if we can, you know, get one hour earlier, before it was like 11 p.m. for me in Japan, which is better, you know. Um, yeah, I so I'm not um, I, I, I don't have a conflict an hour earlier. I don't know. Do you have a conflict, David? This is Let me double check. Air. I do not. That would be fine with me. Okay. Let me yeah, double I don't check. Have a yeah. Okay. It, there will be some days, like once a month, uh, that I won't be able to join the very beginning. So we have this sprint, um, like review session. You might have remembered, and it, it bleeds over until nine thirty every three weeks or four weeks. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's I think it's okay, Marcelo. I mean, um, there might even be like like I was telling David like. I think you mentioned to me like there was um, some of you guys showed up um, to the earlier time I think today and previous week. So there might even be some other people that we could catch as well. So um, it may make sense. I think that's fine. So I can talk with Chris and uh, I can do the logistics for it. Oh, by the way, Chris is no longer at Red Hat or working uh, on Qbert directly at least. He went oh. to work uh, for NASA. Oh, he did. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah but cool. It was all a very. Uh, it was pretty quick, and it wasn't like um, there was no problems or anything. Uh, he just found an interesting opportunity there. Oh, cool. cool. Okay, sounds good. So I guess like, who's the person that does the coordination now? Is it? Uh... Like, <laughs> I don't, it might be me. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, okay, what do we need? We need uh, to move the calendar invites. Uh, yeah, like okay, uh, I can figure yeah. that out. Um, let me just assign that to myself. In this. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll go to the second item. Um, Qbert Summit. Um, so I pulled these two items, the um, bullet point two and three from last uh, week. Yeah, I saw this mail and this F part here. Um, I replied the mail, but for some reason I cannot find anymore <laughs> my message. Anyway, so I wrote here, but no one replied. So David, I don't know if you know those guys that are in charge for the Kubvirt Summit, or... I do. Uh, yes, I know Josh. Um, so just some insight on the Red Hat side for people that are involved with organizing the community. Josh Burkus, um, Jay Burkus, it was uh, Chris's manager. So um, he's kind of the go-to for organizing mm -hmm. the stuff that's that's kind of sponsored by Red Hat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so well, two things. One is maybe I should like try to send a message to him. Um, might be interesting to, to help, you know, in the organization. It's just for personally for me. And the other thing is for our, our you know, our group, it might be interesting to present something, you know, some, so maybe some tasks that we are doing, you know, this performance test that we did. And also the, the trace, the trace thing that uh, Ryan is working 
I think should be things that are in, should be interesting to do. Although some of these topics, for example, the trace might be also if we extend it, it might be also something that we could present in Kubicon. So I don't know. We we can. I think there's definitely a um, there's two audiences here mm -hmm. uh, for Qvert Summit. I think that it can be really tailored. A similar presentation focused on uh, like Qvert developers and users on how to um, um, measure Qvert performance and kind of just our findings. I think for the KubeCon presentation, the uh, focus is more of how we tested it in maybe the more generic sense, how we tested a uh, Kubernetes controller and the things that we looked for and were interested in and less focused on the virtualization part, even though that's obviously going to be there and more focused on you can apply this to uh, your development of like your generic whatever controller. Um, so I, I think there's certainly overlap, but I wouldn't say it's the same presentation. I would kind of focus it differently. That also gives us a better chance of being able to present both the Kubevert Summit and KubeCon, because I think KubeCon, if they think that the presentation has already been given, uh, they they won't accept it, likely. Right. Yeah, that's why I was mentioned that we should maybe carefully select what we want to present. Yeah, and even especially in the title, I would make sure that the titles are very different. Even if the content is like 50% or 80% the same, whatever, just make mm -hmm. sure that there's no way of finding it <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, if you want to um, yeah, but we can correlating the two. We can present like more narrow, you know, down to the, in the Kubevert Summit, for example, you know, the, the auto tool, the audit tool that you, you created and the, the tool that we, the, the load generator tool, we can present like, uh, you know, specifically the, the task that we are integrating in the CICD system. Yes. Yeah, the dense great. test, exactly. So it's, it's a lot of contact already and it's something very focused to the community, you know, the developers and things like that. Yeah, and maybe even the uh, profiling as well. Distributed profiling. All right, yeah. Even well, though I, I've yet to even use that, but something yeah. I will. <laughs> this might be very interesting. So I remember that uh, Kevin used that before and he, he created some graphs, He's, you know, it might be interesting this also. Can be a presentation about that. I don't know how hard it is to do that, but yeah. it can be yeah, like we, maybe a tutorial we, or you know, something like that. Yeah, we've done, I know we've done it um, somewhat like on, at least internally on some of the stuff we've looked at. Um, we have some, we have, I can ask, so Tomas is, is the one who's done this. He was the one who did the, contributed that patch and he was using it. Um, so he's got a ton of, of data on this. Um, mm -hmm. So if we, if that's an idea, I like I can ask him if um, you know if he's interested in talking about it, and you know Marcel, if you're interested in too, you, I can pair you guys up if you guys want it, or ask him if you if you guys want to do something together or whatever. Um, yeah, there's that's another avenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be a pretty dense presentation. Um, we'd have to really structure it from a high. It could possibly even be two presentations, depending on yeah. how much detail we want to get. Yeah, and I think like, you know, with this one, what's interesting to me, like we, so I think what I want to remember is like one of the things that we, we've we done with the profiling is like we just see, that it's a lot of it is a lot of the, a lot of the profiling targets some um, areas where we're, we're marshalling and unmarshalling JSON, I think it was some of the, the biggest areas. Um, but I mean, it would be nice is like to take, because I, I think one thing is like, we, we would be good to have pictures. It would be even better to like, also have like um, some a conclusion or a direction that we're going with it. And that's just something that that would be nice to have as well. But yeah, I, I don't know. We need. I, I think like there has a, there needs to be more of a push on on some of the profiling for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of data there. Okay.
and the density test too. This is like, we have that threshold, like we have the, well, we don't have the thresholds yet. We almost, we almost do. I just, I haven't had the time to do the, to finish this analysis um, of the density test to fully understand what the results, but this is another one. Like, I think we need some more of a push to like, co to complete this, you know, like, so for like a presentation and like we have the density test and we know what it does, but um, you know, where is it going? Like, we want the thresholds and like, we want to get an idea of like, what it's telling us, like, a, you know, a conclusion that we want to, yeah. you know. Yeah, we are kind of, I think it's my fault. So we are kind of waiting for the performance cluster. I'm, I'm working on that. It's, it's been like, a, you know, many, many things to do and PRs that don't get merged and things get delayed, but if everything's go fine, maybe next week we'll have the cluster. So, yeah. and then we can really have like reliable tests. You know, I would say reliable. It's we don't have like performance variation from other other you know other tests that may be impacting. So, the performance cluster will we'll have more meaningful you know data there that we can de determine the thresholds. Yeah, no, that's definitely a factor in this. I, I think that's the, like, yeah, so and and uh, that's that is an important change we're, we're making. So, yeah, I mean, that's that makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, these are all really good ideas. Like, I think, yeah, we we I think well, they need a little bit more, um, get closer to like a conclusion or at least kind of under more along the track of like, mm -hmm. um, you know, more than just you know, here's the work we've done and let's see where you know, here's closer to where we're going. But yeah, I think they, they all should be, um, they all could be talks and for, for uh, keep it something, yeah. Yeah, and then also I, another note on the, on the Kubernetes side, we, you know, I had, I've had some thoughts about this one. I mean, like, so we've, um, like Dave, we, we submitted our presentation previously, uh, um, this one, and um, I think we, we've had, I mean, at least from our end, like, um, Nvidia side, we've had some updates. Like we've done, like we've we've progressed on like a lot of our scaling and performance, and was updates that we could do there, and a lot of things we found too. Um, not just in Qvert and Kubernetes, lots of things um, that would be really interesting that we could tailor towards. Um, we could do towards that presentation, or we could do something, you know, about six scale or both or something, uh, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Do you think you'll still present? Are, are you trying to present it, um, KubeCon EU, or? Well, so I'm not. I'm not sure yet. Like I'm like. Uh, so I think what I'm leaning towards is, I ideally doing. I guess doing something remote. I think like it's probably, um, probably the best idea. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like I don't know what's going on with. You know everything out there so like uh, that's what i'm leading towards that's my right concern now. yeah that's why that's one of the reasons why i said uh i'm not interested in kubecon eu but it, i don't want to get <laughs> it, it's possible to, to do it virtually so yeah. it will be the both options in person and virtual so we can we can participate virtually mm -hmm. i'm going to send a proposal for the cicd you know um system and actually i was talking with david and roman before and i'm probably going to send with my colleague in ibm so but but definitely after the, this first call for you know proposal they have the maintainers proposal and i talked to them i sent an email and they will open after it's closed the first in call for proposal and the maintainers needs it's like um who who submits the proposal needs to be a maintainer so it can be any of you guys and and uh, if it's possible i can also participate so they said that the collaborators can also be uh in the presentation so it would be fine and this is a limitation on that right now. I don't think we have a guaranteed maintainer slot until we hit incubation with the CNCF. I could be oh. wrong, but that's that's the way it was last time. Uh, we we did get a maintainer slot one time, 
uh, and it was because somebody else yielded theirs to us, like another project or something like that. Um, but once we get incubation, I think we're guaranteed that. Well, but my main motivation to become a maintainer was to be able to submit this proposal. But um, actually, I don't need to be if you guys already are and, and can submit that. But of course, <laughs> one of you guys needs to want to, want you to submit to, it. You have to be a maintainer of a project to do this. That's the requirement. Like it's a, yes. I, okay. So Ryan, you can you can do that. Maybe we can do that together if you want. So after the call for proposal, the regular one, it will be you know open a maintainer, uh, you know call for registration, something like that. I don't I don't really know the names, the terms, but it's something like that. And and then it's for some it's for it's specifically for projects and. Actually, Kubvirt presented that in 2018, 19. I think David, your, I don't know if it was David or, or someone else presentations there was actually in this specifically track, maintainers, you know, track. Um, I, I think we got that in 2019. We probably got it in 2018 as well, but we, we failed to get it in 2020 uh, for KubeCon in a, um, yeah. It's, oh, it's but tough. did you, did you guys submit that? Yeah, we were close. <laughs> we got waitlisted. So, yeah, Ryan and I would have gotten, so Ryan, we would have gotten a slot in uh, 2020s um, if we had a maintainer slot where we did it. So we mm -hmm. failed the to get the general admission um, slot or whatever, the, the big pool of people. Um, once we get incubation, we would have actually been able to be guaranteed a slot. Mm -hmm. Here's my thought, Ryan, and you can go, like I support you in whatever you choose to do with EU or NA or whatever. Uh, that presentation we were gonna give last year, if there's a possibility to give it in person, I think that that's going to make a bigger impact uh, for us than doing it virtually. I mean, I could be wrong on that, but it's the connections that you make uh, being in person, be able to come afterwards and uh, all of that, that I think are really important. Yeah, I, I, I hear you're saying. I, I'm yeah. I'm thinking the same thing. And that's what um that's why I'm I'm also like so I'm weighing I'm weighing a lot of things because um I would I mean I would love to obviously get one accepted, but yeah, I mean not going in person, um it definitely it would I it, I would lose you'd lose some things from not going and presenting in person. And um yeah. But it's I don't know. better than not going at all, you know, <laughs> not presenting anything. So, yeah, it's true. But I mean, like, the only thing is, like, with this, like, I, I think, like, with David, like, you know, like, the <coughs> idea that we've talked about with this at scale, like, I think, like, we're, I think we're very close to getting into the general session on this, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, if it's, and it, if we have a presentation that's close to getting in the general session, I almost want to wait till we have, we can do it in person. Um, here's here's it's... my thought. Uh, we're going to get incubation. We're really close. We're probably going to get it uh, in the next few months. Maybe it's closer <laughs> than that. I'm not sure. There's a very good chance that for KubeCon in a, that we could present this uh, and get the um, maintainer slot for NA in person. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you, I don't know, where, where's the next NA one? Like, I just a way to see it's the, like, what's the, is it, is it closer to you or closer to me, closer to, I don't know. If I don't have to worry about getting stuck overseas, I don't really care. That's <laughs> like uh, domestic travel doesn't bother me. Uh, it's Detroit. Wow. That's Detroit. Choice. Detroit. Oh. October 24th in Detroit. October in Detroit. Let's see. Really, Detroit, Michigan. Like, why would they hold a tech conference there? Maybe I don't know much about Detroit. When I think of Detroit, all I think of is getting shot at. <laughs> Ford, <laughs> man. That's not fair. Cars and cars and oh, cars and guns. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. That's funny. So the um, the okay. next one I mean, in Europe, it's Spain. 
Well, well if, if you I... guys are well, for sure, you guys, I'm not container, so probably I will not be the main speaker, but I can I can go there personally. I have although I'm in Japan, I have Spanish citizenship, so yeah, it's a bit easier for me to go there. Yeah, I mean, I think like Marcelo, like this, um, um, like I think, um, yeah, I mean, to me, I, I've been back and forth a lot of this. Like, I, I've, I was first started, like, when I talked to, to David, like, I was, I was like, okay, yeah, let's, let's go travel to, to Spain. And then I was like, well, now some things have changed. And then, um, and, you know, obviously doing it not in person is the thing that I've been, I've been, challenged with so the yeah i mean like even kind of what you, you kind of said david is the you know the the travel um that's not quite the same as as it was um yeah it's gonna be a while before i go outside the united states just because of the uncertainty of getting back timely i maybe i'm just paranoid i don't know yeah no, I've, i mean i've been to spain like a few weeks ago and i've and I enter again to Japan, so for me, it wouldn't be a problem to go there. So, but well, anyway, Marcelo, do you think, like, if you know, let's say um, this time around, so you, which is, um, I don't know, what's the date? Uh, it's 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 the winter, whatever. It's in a few months. This the EU conference, and in the NA conference, I mean, you know, we could. I I mean, I don't know what he like. I, I'm okay, like, if you want to present like with me and David on this, like you've done a lot of work in six scale. Like if you want to talk about, you know, with us on this presentation for NA, I think that like, if you want to wait till October of next year, um, we could look at doing it together then. So do, do you think it's one another, not both? I'd say go I, for it, Marcelo. Go for uh, independently of what any of us do submit your talk if you get it you get it mm -hmm. yep yep and you can still join if you want on the presentation of whatever in na i guess mm -hmm. that was what i'm saying so yeah i mean what if yeah if you want to submit on go for it there are so many angles to this yeah. topic that if uh, you present in KubeCon EU, um, we could still present KubeCon NA and have a, just a different take on uh, like a, there's just so much and you only get like a maybe a 30 minute talk. They say like it's a 40 minute slot or four or five minute slot, but realistically it's about 30 minutes of talking. Uh, there's probably hours of concept here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have many, many different topics that we can we can have different presentations, that's for sure. And especially if it's the you know in October, probably we will have like much more work, you know, that we have we will do that will be different. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to submit like a, anyway a presentation for that, um, and then we'll be up to you guys if you you guys want to when it's open the maintainers call if if you are up to submit something or not, we can talk that by the time probably it will be January only. Okay. And then we we'll see. We we'll see. Yep. We'll we'll do what we can to support you there. Um, but I'll have to look at the details uh, if well, like what the requirements are as far as like from the maintainer. If we can submit on your behalf, that would be interesting. Um, or if we actually need to participate, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's why I find it weird that they only restrict it to maintainers. <laughs> uh, or we I, I can uh, talk about, I, I don't know what the criteria for a maintainer is. It's possible that you could just become a maintainer by that time. What's, um, maybe we can review that real quick. Um, mm -hmm. uh, oh, wait, this is CNCF maintainer. Uh, this isn't like GitHub maintainer. Never mind. That's a bigger ordeal. 
you can try it if you want. Uh, I don't, we don't have a great process for onboarding people yet. That's gonna be the challenge. We're so focused on incubation, it's taking all of our time. Maybe reach out to Josh about that and uh, gain an understanding of what it is to, I think that we have to um, sponsor a candidate and then we have to have a, like a board meeting for it. <laughs> I, I'm not entirely sure. But we don't have a clear um, understanding of what that role, like the responsibilities of that role yet, I don't think, uh, which makes it a little mm -hmm. bit of a challenge. I think that's what we kind of seeded an initial group. Um, so Ryan, uh, myself, and maybe uh, somebody else from Red Hat, maybe one or two other people from Red Hat, maybe somebody from Apple too, I can't remember uh, certain for certain. And uh, that was just the bootstrap, the process that we haven't created yet, I believe. Okay. All right, Marcelo, are you gonna, so you can talk to John and uh, you get to be back. Yeah, we can let us know what we can decide with the um, presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, All right so let's, yeah, go ahead, Dan. What do you I was mean? just gonna say, maybe we can move on because we have yeah. about 30 minutes left. I want to get to your tracing thing, but we got the what, performance cluster first. Yeah, uh, Marcel, you added this too. Um, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it was a PR. Oh, it, it's the, the, the cluster is created. Now what I'm, actually, I mean, there's another PR that I, I'm doing is to install Prometheus you know, in Grafana there. Initially, I was thinking to use Helm, you know, and because Helm is very easy to like to update anything, you know, the versions for Grafana and Prometheus. But, you know, the, the, the infra, the project infra doesn't use, it doesn't use Helm for the other clusters. Actually, it has all the YAMLs locally and use Bazel to, you know, to deploy things in the clusters. So I'm trying now to do, to use the same scripts and the same techno, same tools that, that exist for the other clusters. So it's taking more time than I was expecting to, <laughs> to learn all the tools, but uh, I, I, I already did that now. So tomorrow I will submit the, final PR for that. And then we will have like Prometheus and Grafana in the cluster. And then we can actually start to run the jobs there. Okay. So. Okay, so we're getting closer on. And this yeah. is the, the performance cluster. This is the dedicated hardware that we're gonna use just for the performance, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, and so, so you the, did a, a another- Yeah, in the meantime, since the cluster was not ready, I run again another test. So, okay. but at this time, what I did was I fine tune, you know, the the, the API uh, curves per second and burst. So, it's two experiments here. Okay. The first one, it's already like larger curves per second that it sets one hundred. I think by default it's. 10 and 50, something like that, or 10, I don't remember. We need to check our five and 10, something very slow, very low, you know, the, the default one. We, we, we can double check that. And then I have some snapshots here, but I just want to highlight that when I was creating, then I increased, okay? I increased to 200, the, the virt handler and the controller configuration. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can go, yeah. Okay. I'll see. Here we go, two hundred. And then the the interesting part is with eight hundred. Uh, when I create eight hundred VMIs with the last uh, bump, uh, well, last curve in the graph. Okay. So it's improved, especially if we see the VMI rate uh, start rate. 
we can you can see here that increasing the API requests, it was like um, a little bit, it was two operations per second and before was less than that. Yeah, I think it was flat, right? I think I, okay, so one and a half. Exactly. And, three quarters. and actually even worse with 800, you see? So um, it's oh, definitely crash. some scalability things you know, fine tuning this uh, API, uh, you know, queries yeah. per second, which was a little bit surprising and also interesting for me. So, um, and I, I didn't see if it's improved with something else. We can check you now. I took a snapshot from all the metrics. We can, we can dig that, you know, later and see things. Interesting. I couldn't take this, you know, the graph on his name shot of this graph. That's why I took his print screen. So okay. sometimes when it has too much data, it 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 doesn't it doesn't take this name shot. Okay. Interesting. So an improvement with the higher QPS. So you have I mean that's the same so with two hundred and so you double it. Yeah, one hundred against two hundred. Is it still like, so if you go to the API access, oh, you, you cannot do that. <laughs> you need to go to the, the other link. Oh. Yeah, I need, I need, yeah, I need to separate. Otherwise it doesn't take this name shot. Yeah. So you, if you go down a little bit, a little bit more. Yeah, so you still, we see, even though it's 200, we still see some rate limit. Although it's very low, six millisecond here, but it happens many, many requests and it might be. Um, we can still see like, a, even though with very high, you know, pairs per second, 200, we, we still uh, are seeing some rate limit. And I'm not creating too much VMs, so only 800. So I was wondering for a really scale test with hundreds of VMs, I mean, hundreds of nodes, what can be that? So we'll, we'll really see like, a, need to check, you know, this, this kind of uh, kind of metric. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, need, I, I still have on my to-do list to basically repeat your operation that you're doing on, on some of our larger clusters internally. Cause I, I do want to do that comparison. Cause I, I think like, this is how many nodes, this is one node, three nodes. It's only three, 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 three master and three workers. Yeah. Okay. Very small cluster. Yeah. I want to try this with one of our larger clusters and see what this comes out to. Okay. That's interesting. Um, Especially, yeah, I mean, with, with here, I mean, the, um, I mean, this is noticeable. Um, phase, let me, let me compare the latencies again. Let's see, so the, let's go look at these. Okay, so we're, this is how many VMs, 100 or 200 or something? It's 400. 400. You, you can this see is, the VM count, yeah. Yeah, my oh yeah, thanks. Okay, four hundred. Okay, I see. So four hundred, and then let's see. So we have scheduled. So transitioning to scheduled, right? Um, Less than a minute. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, this is this is kind of along the lines of what, what we see too, and then so this is at okay, we go up here. Uh, nine, 10 minutes, and then um, um, here. So nine minutes or so. Failed. So what? what's the, um, <clears throat> this is the, what's, so this is like when it was. Let's get deleted, so. When it was deleted. Yeah, it's like, for some reason, it's moved to succeed and then fail, something like that. I don't know. Maybe David know better. 
lights get failed here. Does it go to failed or is it going to succeeded? Yeah, it's just succeeded. So th that's the VMI being torn down. Oh, the color is succeeded, isn't it? To creation time. Oh, yeah, it succeeded. It's not failed. Yeah. Right. There, so there, let's see, this was the, they're close, they're somewhat close to each other. So nine, like nine minutes on some of these. It's too nice. It? So what there is like this is four minutes. It, it, yeah. The nine minutes. So this is just a, a 200 VM increase. Interesting. But there is a spike. If you go to the other one, you see this running 15. Yeah. So there was like a few of them that were, you know, very slow. And the other ones, you don't have any, just those ones. And remember that it, it, this is not like a, the real time is, yeah. it's a histogram that, that has like, a, if it's under and above, I don't remember now the, the, the range, it's 10 minutes and then it goes 15 minutes. I don't remember now. We, we can see so you do get that the running spike here on the 600 VM count. You don't get it here, you do get it here at 200. Mm, there is, yeah. Uh, yeah, there is a bit of a difference with the, the start rate. That's very interesting. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this would be interesting I don't know, to even do at um yeah, I mean, the, the um different node counts to see eight hundred, yeah. Because this also some of this too, I mean, could have to do with Kubernetes. Like I, I would have I mean we're doing like you're looking at like scheduled transition to scheduled state i mean this is mostly going to be kubernetes this is like all kubernetes running though well i mean it depends i don't know we'd have to pair this with tracing to see to see what's doing what's doing what in the work queues and see how things are progressing how fast they're progressing okay so another question so you guys uh you know in the beginning of the the six daily meeting I don't remember if he was your colleague, Ryan, that was comparing the time that the pod, you know, become ready to the VM become ready, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So do you know an, a way, is an easy way maybe that we could create a, a Grafana dashboard with that? I, I couldn't find, you know, an easy way to correlate, you know, the pod that was, you know, created um i think we were discussing that before and that maybe we could have a transition saying about that but david and and roman said that they don't want to create new transitions yeah but... this was um this was uh way um so i talked i talked about an add-on to this this was um somewhere in our notes here where uh, I had mentioned different ways that we can get data from the, or different more detailed views between in between transition times. It was like uh, because you can, there's some there's a bunch of data on the um, the pod and the VMI objects based on you know different updates that the Kubelet or Qvert has done to those objects, and you can get timestamps from them. But there isn't there aren't metrics around them. I'm trying to find where I talked about this. But in the logs, in it, not in Grafana. So, well, it's in, it's in, it's it's not in the logs. It's actually it's on the object. It's um, it's you can you can scrape it from the object. It's already there. There's just there's just no, like you said, there's no um, there's no metric for it. At least that I'm aware of. Let's see. Oh yeah, it started with this. I was talking about how how to find like VMIs that are slow. It's taking a long time. Um, 
yeah, like some of these. So like PVCs, measuring PVCs. Um, yeah, so there's a bunch of there's a bunch of stuff like Marcelo. If you if you do if you look at the pod, um, you'll see that there are there's a bunch of timestamps that are posted by the different um, controllers for the work that they're doing, the changes and how they're modifying the object. So if you like, if so, if you're after like, for instance, when the when the pod or when the um, containers go ready, so like the moment um, that the so right before the moment that um, the VMI goes to, um, I think it's scheduled state. That's when all the that's when at least every pod except the compute pod doesn't have to be ready. Um, you can measure the time that that happened, but like in Kubernetes, and then you can compare it to the time that. Um, I mean, we already have this. We already have this as a metric. We don't. We don't have this, the, that timestamp in, and the timestamp that those pods become ready. Yeah, we don't have that as a metric. Right. So that's that's an idea. But there's a bunch there. Is, is my point. Like, there's a bunch that we could look at, but. Um, that's not necessarily native to Kiever, but it's things that we could look at. I mean, I was thinking like we could do this in, an, in the audit tool. Um, I had a few ideas about that. I'll see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, the, we, we can it. we can find that in the trace, but I think it might be in the future a good idea to have some of this information in a Grafana dashboard also. It would be much easier to to check and, and verify. Maybe, maybe new metrics, we can exp find some maybe some way to expose those metrics but it doesn't need to be if it's already there maybe you know a sidecar that reads those those metric and export that so we, we don't really need to to inject new metrics in the code and but the, but the modules can be deployed with a sidecar that they can export prometheus metrics reading from the logs because it's already has this in the logs in it mm -hmm. anyway we can maybe think something about that yeah the other alternative i was thinking is is like the audit tool right now reads the metrics um I mean, we could consider i mean we this would be like a slight divergence from the what it currently does but like it could be that we we have it also read objects so we just you know but that's that would mean that we sort of change the the principle there to also not just do you know metrics so i mean there's that's a possibility i guess like we could you know we want that additional data um but that doesn't that mean this doesn't end up in here it just but it would give us an avenue to test it though at least mm -hmm. so that's i don't know that's something we can consider okay all right um that's performance cluster okay let's go to tracing yeah this one's really close i just had a I don't completely understand the step uh, because it seems like it's not doing what I would, it's doing, <laughs> I'm not sure what it gives us, the, the way the step is structured. Let me look at the PR. Yeah, I've lost the count like, where, where is this? That's so frustrating, mm -hmm. GitHub. I reviewed this uh, like a week or two ago and then I forgot to hit post. <laughs> so <laughs> it's set and my comment got lost forever. Uh, until I reposted it, and now it's like in some comment that's like in the middle of all of this. All right, let me just look at step traces. Ah, oh, here it is. Okay. So we only have traces at, oh, we do have one at the beginning of sync. I missed that. Okay. But we yeah, only so have the... it on the VM controller. Maybe I missed this. Yeah, there's um because so for the VM, the VM is different from the VMI tracing because the VMs doesn't have it doesn't have one of the either update status or sync. I don't remember which one. It doesn't have. I see. Okay, let me let me double check this real quick. There might just be a good place for us to put it in. Um, well, still, I'm not sure. Okay, let's take a look at the example where we do have a sync and VMI. If we put the defer at the beginning of, uh, okay, it's sync. We do a defer, so we know from the beginning of the trace to the end of sync. Okay, 
got that. And then we know from the end of sync to the beginning at the end of update stats. Okay, that makes sense. That, that does make sense to me. So is your concern with the, v, the VM side, which is we have this trace. Um, we have a step at the sync. end of update status. That's yeah. kind of, I mean, realistically it didn't give us anything just because that's the whole length of the execution. Update status is the last thing that executes. So essentially you have the step trace. Um, it's the very last thing that executes before we put stop trace like that stop trace is actually the next thing that's called right after step trace logically yep. and i know it's like hard to view it but that's what happens yeah i i agree so i my thought on this is that so what is so like what's this getting us like so the um i would say so we'll, we'll, we'll look at it without it so if it's not there we don't have sort of a label saying what we expect to be like what we're tracing so that was kind of my my thought on this is that like I'm using steps as like a say, okay, here's this, you know, period of time where we're labeling something. So it's, this is means the time between start and update status. Now the time after that, like I'm not even thinking about, but it is, I agree it's useless. Like, cause it's like, it's sort of the time after, like why, well, and that's and that's not necessarily, I don't think that's your point, but the, the that time is useless. But the, your point is that, right, that, um, we're basically putting a step in here and it's, and there's no point because it's, it's 99.9% .9 of the time is, 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 is like update status. Like, it's just like, why would we want a step? And like, I, like it's, it's the same point is that we can label it and also we can add, there could be future code and, you know, that comes along later that we want to trace. And so we can, you know, I'm, my, I'm figuring that like, like we could, you know, we could still have it and then, you know, maybe someone adds code like that we want to trace and we can just add that there too. And, you know, then it becomes, you know, then there's more things to trace and then we maybe we don't have this problem anymore. Okay, that makes sense. There's a place we can put uh, the equivalent of a sync for VM. If we do that, I'm totally fine with merging it. Here, let me just show you where, if we just put a step, right? trying to get the GitHub link to it. Okay. Um, controller watch. Right. Here. All right. I'll post it in the chat. Okay. That's the equivalent. Um, yeah. So this is um, so in this in this if block you're saying, or at the very end of this if block, right where that uh, right after line three eleven, before between three twelve and three eleven. Okay. Uh, that would um, that would give us a trace of. Uh, essentially everything that led up, everything that was actionable. So you could call it a sync. And in fact, we could abstract out line uh, 287 or 288 to 311 and call it a sync function. In fact, okay. that's, that's probably what we should do. Um, I, I think that that just needs a refactor. So if you put it right between 311 and 312, a step uh, and call it sync, totally fine and that would okay. make a lot more sense and that gives us some useful information because we have lots of things going on before then uh, that could be beneficial mm -hmm. okay yeah i can do that um okay sounds good and All just right. ping me I'll, I'll get that merged right after you do that i feel bad that it's taken it's such a simple change you've made and we've talked about it for months and i feel like <laughs> That, that's not the way I want to operate. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll get it in. Um, that's good though. So this, once this is in though, um, Marcelo, if you are, if anyone has any other ideas for other tracing, just add it. Like we, we should, this should give us the ability to just add this to all our work use. I, I was going to do this eventually, but you know, if there, if you have other ideas, we can, none of this will unlock a lot of things, which would be cool. Okay. Um, the, I haven't had a chance to review this again. Um, do you want to talk at all, David, about your virtual machine pool changes or anything that you've made that 
There's a few things that you want to bring up with this. Sure. The only changes I've made since I posted the PR were your changes. So you had some comments about um, taking away the attach or the adoption logic, uh, which I, I stripped out. So now we only have the ability to release a virtual machine from a pool and not the ability to reattach it. I think that makes a lot of sense for now. Uh, we can talk about attachment in the future if there's a strong use case. I don't have a strong use case and it complicates uh, it complicates the scenario quite a bit. The other change was uh, there were some cosmetic changes, just people asking for um, some better code quality. And uh, Roman requested um, that I add permissions and some functional testing for the default permissions. So there's a view, edit, and admin default uh, RBAC role that we automatically apply to people so they have access depending on their role within kubernetes uh, to create virtual machines or view them or whatever i just need to add that for virtual machine pools that was it this okay. should be good i think that roman yeah roman gave it the approve i think he was waiting on you brian just to make sure that you felt comfortable um, with the changes so far okay so yeah it's on it's on me yeah yeah yeah, I'll need to, I'll see if I can get to this week. Um, okay. It's Thursday. <laughs> Sorry, Thursday. Yeah, it, I'll see if I can do it this week. Um, so I, it's probably going to be tomorrow if, if, if I do get to it this week. But yeah, I'll, I have this, I, I saw Roman approved it. So, and I saw the, I saw you did make those changes. So I'll go through it again uh, when I can, um, hopefully. So we'll aim for the next meeting that we have this. You know, either you know more things to talk about or or we have it merged excellent yeah okay yep i'd like to just get it done before christmas um yep because it turns <laughs> the uh people that work in other countries like israel will continue working and then my pr will fall apart because of all the rebases and everything <laughs> not a huge deal i just if i can avoid it that'd be great yeah okay and right. it's like in tomorrow might have had questions. So I'll look at yeah. yeah, I'll look at that. Okay. All right. That's already four minutes left, but that's that's all I have for agenda. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Right. And uh yep, talk to you later. Have a good day. You too, bye bye.